Hola, buenos dias. ¿Qué tal bien? So if you haven't worked out already, I'm back in Spain and I thought it was only right that I choose to film with a Spanish car. I say Spanish car, it's about as Spanish as a Bentley is British in that it's now owned by the Germans. Anyway, today I'm in a Seat Ibiza. Now, Seat were a Spanish company owned by the Spanish government. They've been around since 1950. But in the mid 80s, they were bought out by VW, who still own them today. I picked up this car from Malaga Car at the airport. Now, this isn't a hashtag ad or hashtag sponsor or anything like that, but I would recommend them. I use them every time. They always come in slightly cheaper than the likes of Avis or Hertz, and you get more of a personal touch because it's a smaller company. So if you're flying into Malaga, do check them out. I'll leave the link below to the website. Anyway, back to the car. I've got a one litre, three cylinder petrol turbo engine mated to a DSG automatic gearbox. Now, I know what you're thinking because I was thinking the same thing, that that will be the slowest, dullest thing you've ever driven. But don't be so hasty because this produces 115 horsepower, which in a small car is plenty. And it actually feels quite zippy. I've driven around 500 kilometers in this car in a fairly short space of time, mainly around busy town centers, and it feels right at home. It's easy to drive, easy to park. It's a perfect little city car, actually. Now, where I live is quite hilly, so you're up and down hills all day long. You'd expect it to run out of steam tackling these big hills. You wouldn't think it would have the power to pull the skin off a rice pudding, but you'd be wrong. Even the steepest of hills, it does cope with quite well. You can hear the turbo kicking in, and all of a sudden you're at the top without a worry. I was genuinely surprised because I thought it was going to be an underpowered disaster of a car, and it actually feels very agile, very nippy, very sporty. You can throw it into these corners, you've got plenty of grip, no body roll. The brakes are very sharp. As soon as I pressed the pedal on the way back from the airport, I nearly went through the windscreen. You can drive this car quite aggressively and it just does as it's told. It redlines at 6,000 RPM, and thanks to the DSG gearbox, the changes are immediate. It changes before you could possibly think about changing. Because it's such a small engine and it's well insulated, most of the time it's completely silent. You almost think you're in a hybrid. Now, thankfully, three-cylinder engines have come a long way in the last 10 years. 10 or 15 years ago, if you jumped in a Corsa one litre, they were just a mess. The cabins would vibrate horrendously. It just felt like it was misfiring because of the imbalanced engine. But this doesn't. This feels very refined. In fact, you'd be forgiven for thinking this was a four-cylinder. This one's even good on the motorway, which is where most three cylinders fall short and become unbearable. This one isn't. I think it was this bend that I nearly wrapped up my 330 convertible many years ago. I was driving back from the golf course. My mate was behind me in his little 1.4 litre Fiesta and he overtook me. And I thought, I can't have that. So I kicked down, put it in sport mode. Anyway, just as I was approaching this bend, I kicked down again and lost the rear end and managed to get it back under control, but very nearly very nearly wrote it off. The interior is very nice too. It's typical VW really. Although I think the Spanish Seat does have more, more flair than the dour German Polo. You get this copper or bronze or, or rose gold or whatever you want to call it, coloured trim. Which I wasn't so sure about at first but I actually quite like. I think it looks very classy. And it makes a change from all the fake carbon fibre that manufacturers are just slapping in everywhere these days. There's plenty of room inside. There's plenty of room in the back seats even if you're six feet tall. The boots are good size, the seats fold flat, so it's a very practical little car. In fact, as you're driving it, it doesn't feel little at all, which is always the sign of a well thought out, cleverly designed small car. The Ibiza goes up against the Fiesta, the Corsa, the Clio, but when you're driving it, it feels bigger than that. It feels more golf sized. I've never considered buying a car like this because I always prefer more luxurious cars with a bigger engine, but for everyday pottering around, this is probably all the car you'd ever need. This is the Excellence model, and it's quite a high spec. You get loads of optional extras, climate control, you get keyless start as well. And this is the model I would go for. I would advise against going for a more basic model, because although they're cheaper, they can be quite austere. The infotainment system is very easy to fathom too. It's very easy to use. The display is crystal clear, and the touchscreen is one of the best systems I've used. It responds instantly. That's a coincidence. There's actually a say a Ibiza FR behind me right now. They do look very good, very aggressive. I like the exterior styling too. It all looks very angular, very modern, very sharp and aggressive. I like the front grille, which they've obviously taken inspiration from the Mercedes A-Class. But yeah, it's a good looking little car. Now, reliability wise, I'm not sure how these will fare. It's too early to say. I'd have reservations though about buying one of these in 10 years time, because I just know that the DSG gearbox will fail unless it's been serviced every 40 or 50,000 miles. 
and I know from previous experience that the little three-cylinder VW engine can burn out its valves and you are asking a great deal from a little engine. This seems to be the trouble with manufacturers at the moment because they're under such pressure to scrap diesels and scrap bigger engine cars. They're just sticking turbos on smaller engines and I just feel as though they haven't really tested them for a long enough period and I think in three, four, five years time we're going to start to get some headaches with them. I say we, I mean me as a car dealer, I just feel like in four or five years time I'm going to get headaches when people are trading them in and they've got engine issues that they haven't been entirely honest about. I think I'll be replacing timing chains and turbos and valves left, right and centre, time will tell. Anyway in the meantime they do make perfect sense because they're quite eco-friendly, they're cheap to run. This one's only cost me 55 euros to fill the tank and it's given me a range now of over 600 kilometres. I've been averaging over 45 miles per gallon, even up and down these hills. So they will make perfect sense for a lot of people. And they'll be low emission zone compliant too. I do really like this car. You get a level of quality that you don't often get with smaller cars. I'm not a massive fan of the DSG gearbox. Now I know I've said this before in other videos. When you're driving it aggressively, they're perfect because the gear change is immediate. But when you're just posturing around round town in heavy traffic, they're really irritating. You don't get the creep feature that you get with a normal automatic gearbox. If you lift your foot off the brake, it doesn't just gradually roll like a regular auto does. So it's sort of all or nothing. It's difficult to judge. And if you're trying to parallel park or parallel park on a bit of a hill, you end up making a mess of it because it rolls forward, then you sort of tap the accelerator and it lurches back. Just not very smooth. Plus the fact, as I've mentioned, they're not very reliable. You've got to change the oil every 40 or 50,000 miles otherwise they'll just fail. And when they break they cost around 1500 quid to repair. But having said all that, it does make them better on fuel and it makes them better to drive when you're driving a bit more aggressively. But yeah, it just stops you from gently rolling along in bumper to bumper traffic. It just makes it all a bit awkward and a bit annoying. But it rides well, it's not overly firm. The seats are very comfortable and supportive. You get plenty of support on your legs and sides which you don't often get with a smaller, cheaper car. Now because this generation Ibiza, which I think is the fifth generation of the Ibiza, it's only been around since 2017, so they are still quite expensive. You'll spend around £10,000 for a decent one. So my advice would be, hang on until 2020, where everybody's three year PCP deals will be going back, and the prices will suddenly start to drop. That's what I'd do. We've only got another six or eight months to wait too. On the whole though, it's a fantastic little car. It's an excellent little city car. It's way more practical than you'd think. I've only had this three or four days, but it served me well. There have been countless trips to Ikea, countless trips to the building merchants, and I've just folded the seats really easily and just fitted everything in the back. So it's been ideal. If I was in the market for a small car, I'd definitely go and look at one of these before I looked at a Fiesta or Clio or Polo. I'm impressed with it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. Give the video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, leave them below in the comments and I'll do my very best to get back to you. So cheers guys. Gracias. Hasta luego.